Hi, welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Tonight, I am going to have a conversation with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife. So this looks a little bit different than normal. The lighting is darker because it's the evening. It has been a long day and I've been moving through a lot of energy myself personally, doing a lot of clearing work, a lot of reflection, a lot of uh, release. And so I thought this evening, I, I had wanted to channel Freddie and couldn't bring myself to do it until today. Now it feels like the time is a better fit to do it. So we're gonna have a conversation with my friend Freddie. Come on in, honey. Lots of red, just a wave of red kind of washes over me and he literally brings in. Oh, I'm gonna be emotional on this one. I don't have any tissue, you guys. I gotta get some tissue. Can you guys wait a second? I'm gonna get some tissue. <laughs> oh, Freddy, Fred. Fred, why do you do this to me? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm not quite as prepared as I maybe would normally be. Yes, that's correct. I thought it would be good to spend some time with you guys though and actually talk to you and I do a channeling when it's something that's really like close to my heart. Uh, World AIDS Day is on December 1st and that is something that is close to my heart because of the passing of my dad. My father died of AIDS in 2002. For those of you who don't know, it's in my story on AboveLifeChannel.com and it's also on Above Life Channel on YouTube as well. Hi. <laughs> I'm feeling very tender and emotions are coming to the surface and for clearing and release, as I mentioned already. I know that there are many people whose hearts are breaking right now, who are in states of wanting healing or needing healing, or maybe states of change. Maybe you're going through some change. Maybe you're contemplating change. And I think we all could use the synergy from our friend Freddie, right? Yeah. I know. I'm going to try to get through this channeling without crying the whole time. I can't promise you guys. Freddie says, change is hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's, it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Even if you want it, even if it's something you chose, even if it's, if it's something positive, change is hard, he says. Do you have any advice for us about change? <laughs> it's funny, he says, move over. <laughs> like, move over, I'm gonna ride with you, kind of a thing. Like, slide over, I'm gonna ride this ride with you, kind of a thing. Okay, he says, you have help. This is a message for you guys. Listen, listen, you have help. I'm super conscious of where my microphone is. I have a friend that's been talking to me about my sound quality, and so it's kind of on my mind right now. So hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Let's see. We are not alone in our processes, even though it feels like, sometimes it feels like other people don't get it, or and maybe they don't, like human people don't, but we have spiritual connections like Freddie that are actually real, just, just get out of your freaking mind and just know that connection to the afterlife is real. Archangels are real. Uh, spiritual masters like Jesus even. Yeah, Jesus, you can talk to Jesus. It works, it's a thing. People have been doing it for centuries. It was called prayer, but now you can actually have more of an interactive conversation. You know, the whole interactive innovation kind of thing. <laughs> if we can have self-driving cars, you can talk to Jesus, okay? So, <laughs> I'm literally seeing like, this is really super, I can't say it because it's totally inappropriate. People will just string me up. I'm going to say it anyway, because whatever, it's my channel. But I kind of see Jesus like Prince at the halftime show at the Super Bowl. Like Jesus like showing up in like this big like holographic image of him. <laughs> just like when Justin Timberlake did that with Prince, okay, for Purple Rain kind of thing in Minnesota. Anyway. Anything's possible, it's the vibe, all right? So you have support, we have support, okay? We have spiritual support. You have spiritual support, it's a real thing, okay? I am so, this is bugging me. 
It's a real thing. I can't. I'm just going to have to, you guys. I'm going to have to hate the mic. It's by your heart, Bridget. That's a true statement. Yeah. That's what Freddie does for us, right? Connects us to our heart. So breathe your heart. Just intention energetically. Okay. So he literally looks like oh, hmm, a little yawn there. It literally, literally looks like like we're in a roller coaster and he kind of slides us over on the seat. You know, like move over, I'm with you kind of thing. Thank you. I think many people will appreciate that. He's saying dancing. He's saying dance or showing me dancing. Movement. This is one of the ways that you can, it can help you get through the hard times. He says the emotions. The problem is for people, he says, is that the emotions are heavy. He says, they're heavy. It's heavy. It's a heavy, it's a heavy thing to feel, he says. And it's like heavy, heaviness to bear. He says, like the emotions are something that you bear. And that's not something you just wipe away, erase, forget. He says, it's, it's real and it's hard. And he's acknowledging that, the, the heaviness of our emotions. He's also saying that it serves a purpose. Interesting, it does. Like the heavier emotions serve a purpose like a blanket to calm and soothe you. Not to bring you comfort, don't misunderstand, he says. To calm and soothe you. To quiet you. Doesn't feel like that, does it, you guys? Emotions kind of seem all crazy and wild, but if we give ourselves a moment with the emotion, really, and investigate and allow ourselves to kind of let the emotions settle in, at first glance, it's not always what it looks like, right? It's, it's something deeper, and that's what Freddie's getting at, I think, is the deeper, the deeper meaning of the emotion. And he says, it's like a blanket, you know, it like lays over you like a thick blanket. He's showing me lots and lots of alcohol. If you've been watching my videos, you know that someone, someone close to me is, is going through a challenge with alcohol and it's trying to redefine their relationship with it and it's really a struggle and I haven't battled with that myself but some of you may have and so you can relate to that and when Fred shows me that I know he's going to talk about addiction and understanding oh he's not going to talk about addiction he says understanding pain Bridget that's what we're going to talk about understanding pain I can understand pain, so can you, right? You can understand pain. It's deeply personal, it's profound and powerful. He's saying it shows you the way if you let it. Let your pain show you the way, Freddie's saying. God, I've been really thinking about my dad tonight. Um, I'm recording this right before the holiday for Thanksgiving in the United States. And that's kind of when we traditionally we Americans traditionally decorate for Christmas and our stuff. And, and usually I decorate way more early, like in the beginning of November, and I just haven't been in the spirit of Christmas at all. And tonight even I was thinking about my dad. I was listening to a Christmas carol, Christmas song, Believe, from the Polar Express movie. And it really reminded me of my dad and like the magical energy because he loved Christmas. He and my mom, they liked Christmas and they decorated up and I kind of got that from them. Like I decorate, you know, I usually do. I usually do. And this year's just different. I just feel different. I feel like things are changing and shifting and, and it doesn't feel like it should be the holidays yet. So he's acknowledging the pain. And I know from doing the energy healing and clearing work that I do that it comes in layers. It comes in waves, doesn't it, you guys? Kind of like grief, right? Pain and grief, oh, very similar. Comes in waves. And he's saying that's what the alcohol does. He says it tries to calm the waves. He says, but that doesn't work very well, does it? Can you really stop the waves of the ocean? Can you really stop that? You can build walls and put up barriers and things to prevent flooding, but it's still there and raging. It doesn't make it go away. The pain's not gone. When you drink alcohol or use some kind of numbing thing or coping mechanism, it just 
is a resistant barrier, but it doesn't prevent. It doesn't seek to understand or know the pain. Freddie's saying, seek to understand the pain. It's not always direct and one thing. In fact, he says it's many layers, it's many, many things. He says, in my life, Freddie is saying this, in my life, I have had a great deal of sadness, you know, loss, heartache. I think um, people might not see my life as that, but there was a great deal of, oh, hmm. He says loneliness, which is very painful. He says when you want your privacy and you really want to respect your, you really want to want to preserve your privacy, it can be very lonely. You shouldn't have to choose one thing over the other, he says, privacy and loneliness, but sometimes it comes to that, I'm afraid, he says. You might feel that way, he says. If people don't seem to understand you and what you're going through, and it's kind of a lot, it seems like a lot of work to explain it to someone, then you're probably talking to the wrong person, he's saying. You're probably talking to the wrong person. And, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't talk to people, he says. You should share your pain. You should, you should have conversation about it with others, with someone else that you can bounce it off of or, or, or who can listen or just be a kind ear. because you need to be able to express that out. And he says it's really important to get it out of your body or it will, it will like um, metastasize. It will um, build and create like a rigidity. He's showing me like a rock, rocks, like calcification of it. It's super graphic. He's actually showing me very graphic stuff, like calcification, like a kidney stone is what it looks like to be super honest, or a gallbladder stone, a gallstone or something. Ugh. That's what it looks like. He says, harsh, I know, but it's physical body pain. That's what happens with disease and ailments. Not all, to be clear, you guys, not all disease or ailments is because you have pain that you haven't dealt with or trauma you haven't dealt with. But there's always a spiritual component, an energetic component to a physical body issue, to an emotional issue, all of that stuff. So Fred, can you give us some advice so that we can feel inspired and hopeful in our hearts because Change is hard, pain is difficult to deal with, and lots of people are going through a lot right now. Mm -hmm. A lot. So what can we say to help? Oh, I keep yawning. <sighs> he says, you've been through a lot today, Bridget. I have. Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. You guys, um, one of the things he says is do not compare your pain. Don't compare notes. It's not a competition. Like he's saying, don't compare. It's... He says, it's a natural thing to look and see, well, I have gratitude. I should have, should have gratitude. I should be grateful. I should be thankful for my life because of what I have when these other people have it so much worse and it's so much more awful for them and I have a roof over my head and I have my health and all this stuff. And he's like, yeah, you can't compare pain. It's not a scorecard. It's not like, well, yours, I'll raise you two, two, um, of this for one of these it doesn't you can't level it out like that he said it doesn't work because it's personal it's personal pain is private but that doesn't mean that you have to hide it from people he's saying don't don't compare and don't hide it compare compete or hide don't compare compete or hide do you understand no comparison no competing no hiding don't hide your pain. And if other people can't handle it, it's because they're uncomfortable because it touches their own pain. It's not because your pain is so bad and it's oh, so worse and what's wrong with you? You can't cope with life. What is your problem? It's because they don't want to know that you're falling apart inside when you look like you got it all together. And they don't want to know your stuff because then they have to face their stuff. While they're listening to you, they're finding similarities to themselves. They're wondering about their own lives, and that's hard. So you have to find someone that is willing to be a compassionate listener and not to jump in and say, oh, yeah, you think that's bad. This is what's bad, because that's comparison, right? You don't, you don't need that. Sometimes it honestly helps to like talk with strangers, <laughs> like do a, like go on a Facebook group that's for that topic. If it's like an alcohol thing, like an AA thing or an alcohol, um, an alcohol support group or an addict support group, um, or 
you know, something like that, if it's a spiritual thing and you're discovering your psychic gifts and and people around you are very um, ultra religious or you've grown up in a, a, a family that very much doesn't believe or friend group, you have a friend group that doesn't believe in any of the spirituality stuff that you've been exploring kind of secretly and it makes you feel kind of bad now, you're at a place where you feel bad, you have to choose between the you you're becoming and the you you were with these people and it's exhausting to try to keep up that you you were with these people. And so maybe going online and finding a group that does metaphysical stuff or that is talking about intuition or maybe a book club where you can learn about different intuition things like super simple like that would maybe be helpful. Hey, we're really good together with ideas. Yeah, we are. Did you have anything else in particular that you'd like to share? Hmm. <sighs> Yeah, life's not always what it seems to be. He says, including for yourself, like when you have a situation or, or, or a circumstance that you're dealing with or change or a decision that you're faced with, he says, the emotions of it can feel really heavy, really heavy. The goal is to let the emotions settle down, settle in, find a, a place to kind of fit in, not hold it in, you guys, but he's showing me like a blanket, settle in, settle down. And then breathe for a while, give yourself a little wiggle room space, and then you'll have clarity. Then you can recognize really what's up because the initial kind of hit or the, the shame or blame or trauma around the issue or the circumstance or the decision can feel so big at first, it needs time to kind of settle down create some room, a little bit of distance maybe, separation, to kind of breathe a bit and then give yourself the permission to then feel what's really present. And he says, trust your heart. You can trust your heart. Don't trust your initial reaction. There's a difference between, he's saying, instinct, instinct and intuition together. Kind of people use the terms interchangeably, instinct or intuition. I'm going to say that they're different. Just so you know, instinct, I think it's like a reaction kind of thing or a, wait, what, what, what? A little bit of a protective kind of what, 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 what piece. But intuition is this just knowing, this calmer knowing. But it feels like emotion sometimes creates this spontaneous reaction, like you just want to get it off you. Like if a bug lands on you, you're like, ooh, and you want to flick it off kind of thing. Like get it off, get it off before it bites before it stings, before it hurts, before it creates problems. Get it off, get it off, get it off. So the reactionary emotion is what we notice. Maybe not so much the truth of the initial emotion. That's what he's showing, the initial emotion. So if you can let the kind of, ooh, kind of surprise and the, what the heck, what the heck? The ah, what's this? Simmer down a little bit, create some space, create some room to allow for some clarity in the interpretation and the more accurate interpretation of the emotion because the emotion can be very intuitive, very intuitive. As long as it's not reactionary or responsive, it can be very intuitive, very helpful and useful. This is where emotions for empaths, which you are if you're watching this about Freddie, of course, because he works with empaths in the heart space. Empaths is like clairsentience, the psychic gift of sensing feeling, knowing from your heart space. And that can be tricky and complicated because of how volatile emotions seem to be or appear to be. But really, really, they can be intuitive and very supportive and very informative if you allow for some time for that to kind of settle down a bit. I'm not talking five months settle down. I'm talking five minutes, five hours, a day or two. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. Good advice, Fred. Very good. So thank you so much for being here on Above Life Channel. I'm Bridget. It's been my pleasure to host you today. I hope that this video has inspired your spirit, filled you with some hope. Having some very real talk here with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife. Make sure you check out Freddie's playlist. He does have a playlist here. And if you're new here, hi, welcome. Make sure you stick around every week on Sundays. We do a podcast, which is an audio in video format um, where I take a talk topic about intuition and I share it with you. Sunday morning coffee with Bridget. On Mondays is when we share the weekly channeling video with an afterlife celebrity guest. And again, 
If you haven't been around, around here before, check out the playlists and see all of the hundreds of videos from the last several years of channeling here on Above Life channel.